Good morning. We welcome you here to Dublin United Methodist Church to our online service. We are starting a new worship series today, Don't Settle for Unsettled, as we uh, work through a very unsettling time in our lives. For everyone, we are trying to find ways to turn to God and scriptures that point us to a way we can live a settled and peaceful life as we rely on God. So uh, we will do that for the next few weeks. We invite you to uh, join us for a uh, special study tonight at 7 o'clock at the church. We'll have some people live. We can do it on Zoom as well. And we will uh, talk about it more in depth. And you can ask questions and we can have some real honest discussion about this time in our lives and uh, how we can be settled. But today, let's prepare our hearts. If you have a candle in your worship space, I invite you to light that there and um, just prepare yourself to worship God. We're also doing parking lot church. So if you're watching this early in the morning, you can join us at 11 o'clock for parking lot church there in the parking lot. And you will hear the same sermon as this one, but uh, you'll hear some great music as well. So let's prepare our hearts as we go to God in prayer. Father, we give thanks that uh, you can settle any storm and you can calm the wind and the waves that are in our lives and give us peace and help us find a way to be settled in you. Let us reach out to you. Let us hear from you today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning, kids. For children's time today, I'm up in the uh, chapel. And this is a room that one of our Sunday school classes uses on Sunday morning. So it hasn't been used in a good while. And uh, First Baptist met up here for church, too. But, uh, I mean, I even went to the door and it was locked this morning. So I had to unlock it to come in here. But it's a beautiful place to come to. And I'll come up here sometimes and pray because it's quiet. And there's this beautiful stained glass window of Jesus as the shepherd and the lambs. And there's a fishing boat and a beautiful fishing net coming out of the boat and the mountains and the Sea of Galilee. It's just a beautiful place to come in the church. And uh, as you look at that picture of Jesus, I'm reminded that uh, when we get together at chapel for preschool or... Uh, just to do other things together, a lot of times we sing the song, Jesus Loves Me. And we sing that, uh, and it tells us that Jesus loves us, and that that's what the Bible tells us. And as we read the stories in the Bible about Jesus, he does the things he does, because he loves you and he loves me. And that's what the Bible is really about, explaining to us who God is, who we are, and why he loves us so much. And uh, anytime you've got a day where it's not going well, like today I'm on, this is Friday morning when I'm actually recording this, it's a rainy, dreary day. And um, I'm here at the church to meet some people, and they're really late and, uh, you know, not going like it's supposed to. But God still loves me, and it doesn't matter if things aren't going perfect, Jesus is still available and he still loves me and I can still come up here and just pray in the quiet and have this peaceful moment. Even on the days when it's rainy and cold and Jesus loves us just as much then. And the sun will be shining tomorrow and it may not be a perfect day, but it's going to be a good day. Because Jesus loves me, and I know there are a lot of other people that love me as well. So just remember, when you read the Bible stories, that Jesus does what he does because he loves you. Have a great day, kids. Bye. Giving is an important part of who we are as followers of Jesus. Not just giving of our finances, but to be giving of our spirit, our love, our care for others. And I'm so proud of you as a church. You have been giving, not just financially, but been giving of your time, from everything from the 
help, folks helping organize stuff with the Pulaski Reeds, to people who've been doing, uh, setting up things for our parking lot church, to uh, so many other things, preparing for the backpack program. It's just been impressive how people have given of themselves so that others would be blessed in the name of Jesus. So I want to say thank you. I also want to thank you for your financial gifts because that helps make ministry happen. I'm standing in the sanctuary right now, and off screen, they have done a lot of work getting new uh, air conditioning equipment in and out. And uh, it's going to be a, you won't notice, you won't see anything different, but you'll notice it what you feel when it gets hot again. So I want to thank you all those folks who've been giving to that campaign, allows us to be able to have the resources to take, take care of a necessary need like that. You can give to our church in all kinds of different ways. You can do it by text to give, an electronic funds transfer, which is really the preferred method because it just makes it simpler for volunteers and probably easier for you. And you just coordinate that with your bank. You can surface mail um, and you can give electronically with a credit card through our webpage. And as happens from time to time, if you're like, hey, I'd just like for you to come by and pick it up or need somebody to come back and pick it up from my house, we're glad to do that as well. And if you are worshiping with us, um, as we know that many of you are from other states or other churches that you attend, and you're like, you know, where should I give? Don't feel torn. We want you to give to your home church. We want you to bless your home church. They need it. And we thank you for just worshiping with us, and that's a blessing for us right now. So I invite you to join with me as we put our attention to Bob as he shares a prayer. I need to have a tooth filled. The filling popped out, and I called the dentist, and they said, come in tomorrow at 7 in the morning. And I thought to myself, it's too early. I need time to prepare. I am not ready yet. You see, I'm afraid of the dentist. When our time is up here on earth, God will say it's time, and I will say I need more time to prepare. I need and we need to get ready now for that day when it comes. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Hey, we got some prayer concerns and celebrations I want you to know about. In particular, we had the Sleep in Heavenly Peace build on Saturday, and here is a real quick stuff you might want to check out. Really want to thank everybody who's made some donations uh, for, for bedding. Uh, every now and then I'll, I'll come to the church and there will be uh, new sheets that will be there for me to take downstairs so we can give away for the Sleeping Heavenly Peace Build. I just want to say thanks. This is huge, wonderful ministry that we're doing in our community. Uh, some of the beds have already been asked for. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Also want to give you a heads up on two things. The How to Be an anti racist uh, book study will begin October 4th for adults and it's a four week uh, series start reading the book now if you need a book we can help you purchase it but we're also going to have a youth version of this study how to be anti-racist and Grace Bailey really is the one who, who had the passionate idea to get this started I'm so excited to be doing this Don Sheeler and I will be helping co-facilitate and it will start on October 13th that's a Tuesday um, to November 3rd. It'll be an 8 p.m. start. It'll be one hour long. It's for senior highs only. It's a 12-person max. So um, there, I hope that you'll uh, sign up for that. You can call the church office. You can follow a link. Send on our email. Uh, you can talk to Grace Bailey. Just I'd love for you if you're a senior high youth to consider being part of this. It's a great study. We're going to make four movements through this study. Not a whole chapter by chapter thing. Um, but I'd love to have you in that group. Also, um, <clears throat> The basketball goal dedication, we did that last Saturday. It was, it was fun. Jennifer Poe was the winner of the horse game. Um, but here's a picture um, of the folks who were there. And just want to say thank you, thank you to all you who uh, made donations uh, over, over the, the years to get that. And some of the don most of the donations recently have been made. Uh, a significant portions of the donations that got us started on the idea uh, came in honor and in memory of Bill Klein. So I just big uh, thanks to the Klein family and just in, in Bill Klein's memory from um, he died in August of 2017 but it was just a it was just a, it was a good day to be out there and remembering Bill or Poochie as most of you remember him also the pages meeting house service that we had last Sunday went really well uh, Reverend Kim Goddard uh, preached our music team did a fabulous job um, here you can see some video uh, of some of that it was just really really great um, also, Camp Dickinson, we're extending the week for you to give, by one, but extending it, the opportunity to give by one more week. And here's a brief video um, from the camp director.
Good morning, Dublin United Methodist Church. This is Gomez at Camp Dickinson, and I've been asked to give you all an update about what is going on at camp. We are on to preparing for summer 2021. We are excited and uh, thankful for the American Camp Association doing some great work, giving us guidelines for how we can safely have summer camp next year. However, after not having summer camp this year and not having any retreat groups at camp, we are working to recover from that, uh, and we have started the Together for Tomorrow campaign. We are in the process of raising $100,000 to make sure that we have everything we need to put on a fantastic and impactful summer camp program out at camp once again, and we would love to have you all involved with it. We're looking forward to seeing you all back at camp again and joining together with you for worship in the near future. Be safe. Also, I want to give you a heads up that the bench, our bags to bench program that we have um, is now completed. We we have accumulated 500, over 500 pounds of plastic bags thanks to you. So what do you do with all those plastic bags you're going to bring to the church, been thinking about bringing to the church? You can go, go ahead and take them directly to Food Line. However, if um, that is not possible for you, you can still bring them to the church. We'll begin collecting for next year. It really only runs from um, April to October. Um, but we, you know, you can go ahead and bring them. We'll kind of try to store them. If we run out of room, we'll kind of help you get them. But instead, if you're able to take them to Food Line now, go ahead and do that. But thank you so much. This is going to be an additional bench that we'll be able to put out at our shelter area to kind of slowly start replacing some of the benches that are showing their wear. So um, thank you so much for doing that. Also, our Holston Conference needs cleaning kits. Uh, cleaning kits are used uh, after hurricanes, after national disasters like uh, wildfires and uh, out west, and Holston Conference has given away all of our cleaning kits. And if you would like to make a cleaning kit, you can go to the Holston Conference site, contact the church office, um, but we need folks to begin to make some cleaning kits so we can get those back to the conference. And uh, just to remind you, there's lots of ways you connect with worship if you're watching this, but also if you live somewhere like from Baskerville Street to the the Dublin uh, Veterinary Clinic um, to Highland uh, uh, Assisted Living Rehab Center, you can hear us on Sunday morning on the radio live for Parking Lot Church, which happens at 11 a.m. Last week we had Emma Jennings, and she did a great job preaching. She's just such a gifted young adult, and so thankful that um, that she feels a call in the, to, to follow God and call to become a pastor. It was great to have her preach last week. But um, there's lots of ways that you can connect and worship. And just want to remind you, October 18th, um, we are now freed to be able to have in-person worship. October 18th, uh, we'll have a 9.30 service and we'll have an 11 o'clock service. You'll have to follow a link to sign up or call the church office to sign up and more information will come closer to that. We'll do a video just like for Parking Lot Church and we'll continue to um, broadcast on FM so that other folks can listen and participate as well. Even if you want to come be in the parking lot and just listen to the FM station to be in church that way, you're welcome to do that too. And also, we have a new project we're doing with Dublin, uh, Dublin Elementary School. It's called the Grant a Book Wish, and it's just, it's just it's based on the simple idea that the right book in the right hand of a child can change their life to help them learn how to read and have a passion to read because you got to learn to read and then you read to learn. And we're uh, kind of creating this, this program. Martha Parker is really driving this. If you want more information or if you want to make a donation to help get the right book in the right kid's hands, you just mark it. Uh, grant a book wish and just make your gift to the church that way. We'll make sure that helps fund that program. It's very exciting. So um, got a couple prayer concerns and celebrations I want you to know about. And one, some of you know, um, this week has been especially difficult for me and my family. Um, have, my father comes um, from a large family. There were 12 children, um, 10 children who lived past two, uh, a couple who died um, before they turned two. And uh, this past week, um, within five days, I had two of my just fantastic aunts who passed away and I've been in, doing funerals in West Virginia um, this week and it's just been uh, just especially difficult so I appreciate your prayers uh, and a lot of you have reached out to me and I just want to say thank you for that thank you so much um, also I want to invite you to continue to be in prayer for uh, John Spangler and Gwen Spangler as they continue to get better and pray for Roxanne uh, Griever she had to go in and out of the hospital this week and let's uh, pray that she's getting better she's strong as a pine knot but just inviting you all to continue to pray for her and also continue to pray for Bonna Beamer and Bonna Holcomb. And if you're looking like, you know, you're like, oh, I just remember I want to give a prayer request. It's Sunday. How do I get to the church? I'll leave a message. You can text your messages uh, ministry, to our ministry care line at 
2579. And that's a number that Don and I both received text messages on, or if you want to have the questions about ministry, how to get involved, it's just an easy way to make sure that Don and I both will see it, and we can one of us will respond to you very quickly. So uh, that's what we've got for today, and I want to invite you to join with me in an attitude of prayer. God, we can hear the night creatures beginning to come out, uh, and yet this worship service has been pre-recorded, and now we are um, in the middle of the day for many people watching this. God, we thank you for how you are the God of the day and the God of the night. And no matter how difficult things may be, no matter how we feel our circumstances are overwhelming us, God, we trust and know that you love us and are with us. So God, help us have confidence this week as we enter into yet another week with so many uncertainties. Help us, help us not be unsettled. Help us trust in you and be settled that your love is enough. We give you praise, God, for this day. Amen.
we're in this season that just feels so not normal. Everything we used to do or much of what we used to do is changed, shifted, and, and for some of us, it's going to be kind of dramatically shifted for a long time. So that's why we're preaching this worship series. We don't want you to settle for unsettled. Um, today, I want you to understand one fairly straightforward thing that we feel like is a, a pretty straightforward step to get you from being unsettled to settled. It's going to be within reach for most of you. There'll be some of you that'll be harder for others. that will be very easy. It's going to be an aha moment uh, for many of you because what scripture reveals is so beautiful. And we want you to see this. Um, this is a three-part worship series. And today is it has a part A and a part B. This Sunday and next Sunday, be using a very similar scripture, that kind of same story of scripture. But the difference between being settled and being unsettled uh, is just a straightforward decision uh, that most of us make all the time, but we don't realize the impact of the decision that we're making. The decision you make can turn, has the power to really turn a bad situation into something good. It can thwart evil intent and turn it into something good. It can take something that seems so frustrating and can even find the joy in doing it. And this decision is what I want us to talk about today. What is it, you're asking? It's our ability to respond, our ability to choose our response. I know when I was a kid, my mom used to drive it into me all the time. Think before you act, think before you act. You know, as I'm picking myself up off the bike after running into the fence, she's like, think before you act. You know, some of us, it comes more natural, others, not so much so. But we all can do better if we think about what our response is going to be, is going to be what it needs to be. Um, if we just react, we really relinquish the possibility for us to turn it into something much more powerful. Our reaction is often based on what we've seen modeled in our life, and that may not be a good thing. When we just react, we don't recognize the power we give up by the choices that we can make. Um, and that's the catch. You know, and the intuitive response is just to react. It's not really natural sometimes to think, okay, wait, I gotta pause long enough to think about the impact of my decision. But that's the invitation of being a follower of Jesus, is to take time to pause, think before you act. Uh, you choose your response, not because other people expect you to do a certain way, but because you faithfully are trying to grow in a more, to become a more principled follower of Jesus. So you choose your reaction. Never underestimate the power of a measured response in your life and in the situations that you're a part of. I'm gonna use this story, like I said, that's familiar to many of you. This is part one of a part two in this sermon series. And this is how the story ends. And some of you are gonna know immediately what story this is. Some of you who are new to reading the Bible are gonna be like, oh yeah, um, I, I wanna learn more about that. But here it is, it's in Genesis chapter 50, verse 20. And it says this, this is the, the main person speaking. He says, you intended to harm me and the you he's talking about is he's talking to a group of people. They're the ones that had evil intent. They're the ones that uh, just did not have his best interest in mind. They had, they had purposely made decisions that were going to hurt this person. But he finishes sentence. He says, you intended to harm me, but God intended it for good. You know, those situations a lot of us find ourselves in, you know, the circumstances you know, they can drive how we see our life and even how we see our purposefulness in life. And what this person in this Bible story is telling us about is that I get to choose because God is doing something through me. You thought you were doing something terrible to me and trying to end something, but God did something amazing through me. So here's the big picture. You have Abraham, you read in the, uh, the Old Testament, the book of Genesis, you've got Abraham who is faithful and a follower of God. God gives Abraham a promise, says your descendants are going to be as many as the sand. Abraham has Isaac. Isaac has Jacob. And Jacob has 12 sons. And one of his sons' name is Joseph. And Joseph is his, is the child of his, fa is his favorite child of his favorite wife. So that's a sermon and all that in itself. But what happens is that that Jacob treats Joseph uh, sometimes with special privileges, and that in, kind of infuriates his 11 other brothers. So ultimately, uh, it, it ends up that their jealousy kind of takes over and they're out 
uh, watching the sheep. Joseph comes. He's got his brightly colored coat on. Yes, that Joseph. Um, he, he shows up and like, hey, we're just game over. We're done. We're just going to kill him and be done with it. He's been a thorn on our side. We're going to tell dad that some animal attacked him and ate him. Well, they take him, they pull off his coat, throw him in a well, and they thought, well, it's going to leave him here to die. When one of them kind of in this twisted act of mercy says, you know what, let's sell him. Let's make some money off this. Let's just not kill him. And they sell him to some Ishmaelites who are coming by and they, they the slave traders at the time, and they are headed toward Egypt. They head back home in the opposite direction. Their father is heartbroken and Joseph is, you know, in slavery now. Everything's changed for him. Nobody is going to be looking for, for Joseph and nobody is going to be trying to help Joseph out. I mean, he is absolutely zero, 100% alone. And that's where I think the story begins to connect with me and you. For some of us, you know, in your relationship, your intimate relationships, you feel so alone. Or maybe, you know, because your family is not able to be around you. You're not able to be around your family right now. I totally get that. Or maybe it's in your work situation. You don't feel like anybody understands the workload that you're having to deal through, all the, the learning curve. I mean, if you're a teacher right now, I mean, you know, some of you might be really good with, with technology, some of you might not, and, and yet you have so much more being asked of you. And you're like, How, doesn't anybody understand? I feel so alone right now. Or, or maybe, it's your finances, you know, the, and the COVID has had a, has, has a terrible impact on you. And, and you're like, I, I don't, I don't want to tell anybody what's going on, but I feel so alone. I'm suffering alone right now. This is where we enter and connect with the story. Perhaps um, this is where you can also see that the story begins to take a very beautiful turn, a turn that you and I can take as well. And it's in Genesis chapter 29, verse 2. And we hear Scripture tell us that, the Lord is with Joseph. The Lord is with Joseph. Now, it creates a problem for a lot of us in different versions of Christianity. It depends on how you have come into Christianity, or it may be one of the reasons some of you are not a Christian anymore, not a follower of Jesus, and definitely not going to church. And it's because uh, you grew up uh, in a way that God was always good. And if people were good, good things would happen to them. And you read this, or something's happened in your life, or someone's happened something in your family, and it's how does bad things happen to good people? It just doesn't make sense. If God is good, how can God allow suffering to happen? How can God allow COVID to happen? You know, this is how can there be a good God if all this bad stuff is happening in our world? And you know, this is kind of what's going on with with, with Joseph. I mean, he was a good guy and I did do anything wrong, and then now he's been sold as a slave, left for dead by his own brothers. So you know, most of us have had this view of God at some point in our life as Christians in America that God is with you and because God's with you, things are just going to work out. It's just going to work out. But if you were raised with this idea that Christians, um, this worked out, things always worked out for the good for Christians, I want to remind you that's a pretty modern idea. Historically, Christians have always understood that following Christ meant suffering. That following Christ meant you took up a cross and your life may not be any easier, but we know in whom we believe and we have a hope that what is, happens in this life is not the end of how we will experience. There's an eternity that awaits. So if you left the idea of a good God that only allows good things to happen, if you walked away from that, hey, I want to tell you congratulations because you walked away from a God that doesn't exist. That's not the God of Christians. What we find in the Bible is instead people who face extraordinary, difficult, painful, suffering situations. We believe in a man who gave away his life so others can live. So we should expect that suffering is just part of what it means to live and part of what it means to be a follower, to choose to be a follower of Jesus. So let's get back to the story, kind of a little theology on the side there. God is with, with, with Joseph, but... Joseph is not getting justice, fairness, or mercy at all. Uh, but don't get lost in the story. There's a lot of great details in there. Joseph is like me and you in the sense that he makes an intentional response to God. In Genesis 39, 5, uh, it says, you know, because of Joseph's, Joseph's faithfulness, the Lord blessed, and we're expecting to hear Joseph. It actually it says the Lord blessed Potiphar, which is the man who owns Joseph. Potiphar and his wife owned Joseph. And because of Joseph's faithfulness, God blessed his owner. That seems unfair. That doesn't seem quite right. But, you know, how does that work? But the point 
that we hear here, here in this passage, is that Joseph responded as if it was God was with him, even though he didn't see evidence of God being with him. God wasn't removing him from a difficult situation, but yet he believed and acted as if God was with him. And why did he do that? Remember, Joseph, this is a couple, two, three thousand years before Jesus came on the scene. Joseph has no Bible like we would have. All he has are the stories of his father and his grandfather and his great-grandfather. They've been handed down, and those stories are compelling, powerful to him enough that he remembers and wants to believe that God has picked, chosen through him, and that it's important for him to be faithful. Um, I mean, that'll preach on its own story that, you know, grandparents and, and parents have a huge impact on the faithfulness of how their children will live their life. But for Joseph, he didn't have any Bible. He didn't. He just had those stories that had been told to him around a campfire. So Joseph decided to respond as if God was always with him. And that's what I want to ask you to do. Uh, how can someone in your circumstance, at work, uh, your, your relationships with others, your finances, um, your, your health, how would someone in your circumstance respond as if they believed that God was with them in spite of their circumstance? Now, what does that look like? How can you apply that? Well, this is a... <clears throat> the question I want to invite you to respond to and not react to. Never underestimate the, the power of a measured response. See, things get worse for Joseph, actually. They get terribly worse. Um, he's working in Potiphar's house. Um, he's owned by Potiphar and Potiphar's wife. Potiphar's wife, it's funny, Scripture tells us in Genesis 39, uh, 6, it says, Joseph was well-built and handsome. I mean, he was a good-looking man. So, <laughs> Potiphar's wife, kind of lonely because Potiphar's out doing all this important stuff as a, as a high-ranking official in Egypt, tells, commands Joseph to come and to be with him intimately, to have sex with him. And Joseph is like, oh my gosh, what do I do? I mean, I kind of said, if I tell my master, no, uh, you know, that's that can mean bad things for me. If I say yes, um, then her husband finds out that's going to be bad things for me. So he's kind of caught in, in a no-win situation. I mean, but, but here's his answer. In Genesis 39, 9, he, he kind of tells this, and he says, like, you know, your husband has not withheld anything from me but you. So it would be wicked for me to do this, and you, get, you think he's going to say to your husband, but he says it would be wicked for me to do this to God. He has, he has nothing to gain from this decision and everything to lose. And he still is loyal and trusting that God is with him. And this is the same God, let me remind you, that allowed him to be left for dead, sold for a slave twice, and now he's in a win-win, a win-lose, lose-lose, that's what I'm trying to say, situation here with Potiphar's wife. I mean, he's still trusting that God is with him. Ultimately, uh, the wife says no, um, he says no, the wife persists, and then it's, it's crazy. He ultimately gets accused of doing the crime that he refused to do and pays the punishment as if he did it. I mean, and yet he's still faithful? How does, how does that work out? The point is that bad things are going to happen to good people and have happened to good people forever. And right now, you might feel like bad things are happening to you. And if you're struggling in your situation right now, you are not alone. Do not settle for being unsettled. And that's where I'm going to pick up next week. But to close, between now and next Sunday, I want you to do something. I want you to try something. I want you to, to not settle for being unsettled. Some of you, are, you know, are dreading going to work on Monday if you're watching this on a Sunday. And I want you to wrestle with this question. How would someone in my circumstance respond if they were confident that God was with them and that God was depending on them and their response? Now, that's not a question original to me. I came across it somewhere else. But um, what would happen if that was a question you tried to answer this week? Your answer to this quick question is your invitation to become settled when you have felt unsettled. If you act on it, you will emerge better and not bitter. You'll emerge settled 
and not unsettled. We can be better in life because of how we choose to respond, not because of our circumstance. Let me read to you a passage of scripture to close this on. 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 8 and following. This is a New King James Version. It says, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Resist him, steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world, that you're not alone in your suffering. All of us around the world are suffering. But may the God of all grace, who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you have suffered a while, perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. To him be the glory and the dominion forever and ever. Amen. May Christ settle you this week, and may you find peace. I look forward to seeing you next week as we do part two of this message. Thank you for worshiping with us today. And as we have traditionally been doing, we invite you to receive Holy Communion in your home. We have elements here. Uh, some, Don, tell us what these are. These are some of our alphabet tiles from our summer feeding program. That's it. Spelling out the word walk. And... Uh, a bottle of Gatorade from the fridge. There we go. We got electrolytes and all kinds of nourishment. So whatever it is that you have at your home, I'm going to go ahead and prepare that now. And we'll lead you through a time of receiving Holy Communion, blessing your elements at home and those here so that you can share safely in Holy Communion. Know that when we get back in church for worship on October 18th, we will not be having Holy Communion. We'll continue to do Holy Communion online. So we are so glad to be worshiping with you and connected with you in that way. But I want to remind you why we do Holy Communion. It was Jesus, the man who lived, died, and was resurrected, spending his time, his last meal, with his closest friends. And as he was with them in what was understood as an upper room, and they were celebrating the Passover meal, uh, a cup came by toward the end of the meal, and they would have used it symbolically to remind them of certain elements uh, in, in that moment of, of really worshipful remembrance. And Jesus says, I want you to take I don't want you to eat as he took the, the bread and the, and the cup. He said, take and drink and remember me. This is my body, which is given for you. And the disciples were surprised. I'm not really sure exactly what that meant. Um, but it wasn't only until the next few days that Jesus was, resur Jesus was crucified and ultimately resurrected that they understood the fullness of what he meant. Meaning that you, me, Don, all of us have our sins forgiven through that blood and body of Christ. And every time we take it, we are to remember and to give thanks. So I'm going to invite you to join with me in an attitude of prayer and confession as we bless these elements, both in your home or wherever you are in these elements here. So let's pray. God, we come to you and we ask forgiveness for our sins. We, are, uh, we struggle in so many different ways with being a follower of yours. We struggle with truly living into the wisdom that you have given to us. So God, forgive us where we have sinned, where we fall short. And we pray, Lord, that in that forgiveness of, of our sins, that we would be eager and quick to forgive those who've sinned against us as well. We thank you, Lord, for these elements. And, and your son who showed us a new way. When, when things did not seem there could be any different, he showed us that even death cannot hold him. So Lord, we thank you for your son, Jesus, who took these elements and how he reminded the disciples then and reminds us now that they are his body, his body given for us that we take into us so that we truly can be like him as well. God, we pray that your Holy Spirit would be upon these elements here and upon the elements in these homes and that your spirit would be made evident in the homes as they receive now. God, help us be one in body, one in spirit, one as a church so that our witness would be one for you in this community. God, we give you thanks and praise for how you're with us now. And all God's people said, amen. Amen.